The subject matter for me is suture fixation of IOLs, and thank you for inviting me to Chennai. These are my financial disclosures. Nothing will impact the subject matter of this talk. The course is going to consist of a video-based suture course on fixation. We want to understand the surgical techniques for, for fixation as well as some of the advantages and disadvantages of the procedures. Small incision suture fixated lenses have become a hot topic in the past couple of years and to do them you're going to need some instrumentation and some suture. You also want to know where that lens is. Is the patient aphic or pseudophagic? Where is the IOL? Now let's talk about the setup for success. With all these techniques you're going to want to make sure you measure 180 degrees across the visual axis. We're now measuring three millimeters back and four millimeters apart. And especially in the case of the hydrophilic acrylic IOL, the AO60, that four millimeters apart is going to correspond to where the haptics are on that IOL. Now the AO60 implant does not reach sulcus to sulcus, so it's important to balance suture tension to center the lens. Now here's a clinical example uh, using the AO60 in a case where there's no support for an anterior or posterior chamber lens. We've got pretomies made, we're measuring three millimeters back, and I'm using the trail card to make these measurements. Centered on the centration mark, we're measuring four millimeters apart. We'll do that on both sides of the eye. Now, out of convention, I like to use trail cars. Uh, you do not have to use trail, car, trail cars for this technique. You can just use a sharp blade or an MBR blade. Uh, always do a vitrectomy before you remove the lens and using an anterior or posterior chamber infusion system I think is critical in these cases. Here this is a single piece acrylic, uh, sorry, a single piece PMMA lens going out. We're beginning the lacing of the hydrophilic acrylic IOL. Now the pattern for lacing this implant I think is important. We, met, we go down through one haptic, across to the other, and then up through the second haptic. What that's going to do is when that IOL is in the eye, it's going to keep the IOL further away from the iris. It's going to push that lens a little bit further back in the eye. We've got our four sutures placed. We're going to fold the implant, put it in the posterior segment. And notice I've removed the trocars already. The trocars will actually hold the implant back. And they'll give you a funny looking position of the implant. And now using sliding knots, we balance our suture tension and infusion is on during that balancing procedure. You don't want that suture too tight. Bury the knot into the sclerotomy. And then what I think is critical is closing the sclerotomy that's holding the knot. That's gonna prevent a wound leak and it's also gonna prevent that knot from becoming exposed down the road. Here's the case at the end with a nicely centered uh, implant. This works well for suture fixation, but there are problems. The hydrophilic acrylic material can calcify when exposed to air or gas. Here's an example of one of my implants that I had to explant, and thank you Liliana Werner for sending me these pictures. Now I want to step back for a minute, because very often we talk about the big stuff but not the small stuff, and here's a very helpful t hint, tip, when it comes to how to suture an IOL when it comes to suture management. I've seen many people suture the distal or distal to the surgeon suture first. What that means is when you pass your second suture, you've got a very small target spot to hit or you're going to induce some twisting of your sutures. Instead of doing the distal suture, you should lace the proximal suture first. In that way, when you go to pass your second suture, you've got the entire pupillary zone here to, to hit the mark. And that's going to make your life much easier. So back to the, to the topic here. With the opacification of the hydrophilic acrylic material, we've been looking for better solutions for small incision sutured IOLs. So another technique is to use a hydrophobic acrylic IOL, and the one that we're using here is the MX60 in an off-label way from Bausch & Lomb. The incisions are the same as the AO60. We are centered across the visual axis, three millimeters back, four millimeters apart. Where this technique is gonna stray a little bit is in how you lace the implant and in the suture pattern that you use. So again, we are lacing the more proximal or proximal to the surgeon's suture first. This is how we lace this implant. So the suture goes over top of the haptic through the little cut out and then back over top of the haptic again so there's no induced tilt by that suture. Now we've got the leading haptic pre-laced. The distal haptic, I've laced the suture through the little A-frame, um, through the, the little pillar, but I haven't pulled the sutures through the sclerotomies. 
And that's going to help us ensure proper suture orientation once this implant gets into the eye. So now we're going to drop this IOL into the posterior segment. And now I'm going to grasp, and here I actually do the distal first, then the proximal. But we're going to grasp these sutures. And right now that implant looks a little bit funny. But once I get this suture secured, you're going to see this implant right itself. So here the implant will flip over, and now it's in the correct orientation. We'll take out the trocars, and just like the AO60, we'll balance our suture tension. Again, this is a critical step. You cannot over-tension those sutures. We'll bury the knots, close the sclerotomies, and then eventually close the conjunctiva. And now through a small, even a smaller incision in the AO60, we've got a hydrophobic uh, implant sutured in place with good centration and minimal tilt. So this technique works you know, really very nicely. And you can also apply it to larger implants. So you don't have to use these small foldable IOLs. A single piece PMMA IOL like the one you see here, the, this is the uh, CZ70BD. In this case, the implant, the suture, uh, proline suture had broken and the implant was mispowered. So we ended up exchanging this lens. The idea is the same. We're three millimeters back and we're four millimeters apart, uh, 180 degrees across the eye. Uh, there are multiple ways to lace these haptics. I do a torque, anti-torque pattern, which is the middle pattern there in that series of three, but there are all different ways that you can lace this. So it just goes to show there's more than one way to skin a cat. So that, now my sutures are, are laced, the implant is laced. We'll carefully tuck this IOL into the posterior segment, being very careful not to tangle the sutures. The nice thing about these larger implants is you can simply pull that haptic to the scleral wall and tie your suture. You do not have to balance your suture tension like you do the foldable IOLs. So in summary, multiple techniques have been described to fixate IOLs in the absence of capsule support. You will need some extra instrumentation, so be ready in the operating room. Have the surgery planned. And if you're not comfortable with me, do these surgeries with a retina surgeon. Thank you.